Hey, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to do rotations in geometry using tracing paper or something like tracing paper. When I taught geometry before I retired, I had a ton of this stuff. It's called patty paper. So if you're a geometry teacher, you probably have some of this around in the supply cabinet. If you don't, there's a couple options um, that you can use. One would be just to use a clear baggie. Works really well with dry erase markers and then they can the kids can just erase it so if you're also if you're a student you can also use this but you will need dry erase markers if you're going to erase it what i like to use since i'm at home now is wax paper it works just great and i have a bunch of this stuff so i cut off a big sheet and then i just cut it up into small pieces when you're using this though you don't want to draw on the wax part you do want to draw on the other part so we are going to do a rotation with this and the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to do more than one rotation. So I'm going to make this by tra I'm going to trace the axes and I'm going to trace the triangle and the points that we're going to be rotating. So let me grab my oh, I happen to have a dry erase right here. That works. I was going to grab a sharpie but sometimes that's okay. I don't care if it bleeds through. And that's my axes. Now that's probably going to bug you because I didn't use a ruler, but you don't need one. This is supposed to be a quick and easy project. And it's a tool for your kids. So if you have this stuff around, they can, I always let my kids use this on tests and quizzes too. So there is the triangle and more important, you need these points. That probably bled through. <laughs> okay. Um, but, and they need to be labeled, or at least a couple of them have to be labeled because we're going to move this thing around. All right, there it is. That's the triangle that I am supposed to be rotating. So as I turn, no matter which way I turn, I'm going to still be able to line up. The origin is right there, and it might be helpful to put that on the graph color that in so people can see that that's the center that we're turning around and in other problems you can change that center that's what makes this beautiful all right the first thing before we start getting into the problems is you need to know these things you're going to be asked to move or rotate either clockwise or counterclockwise right now i know a lot of students learned how to read a round clock an analog clock but in high school, what I'm noticing, they've been on their phones for so long, they only understand digital. So clockwise moves this way. If you're in your classroom and you can look up at the clock, the round one, and it has a second hand, it's going to be moving in a clockwise direction. So that'll give you a hint if you're taking a quiz or a test. Counterclockwise would be opposite of that. All right, moving that off. Let's do the first problem that you may see you may be asked to rotate this triangle 90 degrees clockwise and then give the new points. Let's start by writing down the old points. So P is 2, 2. Q is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4. And R is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1. And what we're going to be asked to do is to change these points so we come up with P1, or not P1, P, I'm sorry, P prime is what they call that. You put a little apostrophe on it. What will be those points? Q prime and R prime. And we're going to do that using the tracing paper to figure out what those are. There are shortcuts for finding these just using the points. But I, as a teacher, found that kids do much better if they can visualize it first and they'll come up with the algebra shortcuts on their own, or at least they'll understand those algebra shortcuts easier and faster when you teach it to them. Okay, so we're going to be going 90 degrees clockwise. Well, clockwise is going with the clock. Well, here is the original triangle, 
those are the original points. 90 degree turn means you just go one click. Click. And that's where the new points line up. Now I didn't do the most perfect job of drawing, but you can still figure out where those points would be. So for this one, P prime would be the new P, which is right here. And that is now at, neg X is still positive two, and Y is negative two. Q ended up down here, and that is at X equals one, two, three, four, and Y equals negative one, two, three, four, five negative 5. And R right here is at X equals 1 and Y equals 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4. There's going to be patterns in these points and you'll figure out the shortcuts for how those work and as a teacher if you're looking at this as how to teach this a little bit easier don't push it yet. Let, let do a few of these and let kids try to find these shortcuts on their own because if they can figure it out, then, and I'm not going to go over it in this video either because I never, I never <laughs> remember the shortcuts either. And I got to be honest, I just wanted to show you how to use the patty paper to be able to do this. Now what that would look like if your kids were using like a baggie with dry erase, it would be the same thing. It would just turn like that and you could have them use this as well. All right, so that was 90 degrees clockwise. All right, let's do it again. Uh, I wanna use the same diagram and I'm gonna use the same thing. It's just that I am going to do a new problem. And this time I wanna go 90 degrees counterclockwise. And for this one, I am gonna change this notation and change color of my marker. We're going to do P double prime. Let's see where it's gonna land first. So counterclockwise means you're going against the clock. So look up and see which way the second hand is going, which is probably this way, and you wanna go the other direction. So you're gonna go one click this way and you can see where those points would line up. So there's my, my, my new P. So instead of it be P prime, indulge me, I'm just gonna call it P double prime. And we end up with negative two and Y is positive two. And our Q, which I'm gonna call double prime, one, two, three, four, that is negative four, and it's going up one, two, three, four, five, which is positive five. And our, <laughs> our double prime, our new one, is negative one, one, two, three, four. And right now, I'm sure there are some students who are like going, I can see some shortcuts. You can definitely see the patterns. Then we're using the same number. Sometimes they flip and sometimes they change signs, but it's still the same number. It's nothing completely different. So that was 90 degrees counterclockwise, what that would look like. All right, let's do it one more time. And for this one, we're going to rotate it 180 degrees. Now for 180 degrees, Let's just move it 180 degrees clockwise and counterclockwise, and you can see why they won't tell you which way to go. So 180 degrees is two 90 degrees clicks. So that's 90 clockwise and another 90 clockwise. All right, and we're down here in quadrant three. Now if I do it at the other direction and go counterclockwise, You'd go click over to quadrant two first, and then you'd go click, and you'd still end up in 
quadrant three. And that's why 180, it doesn't matter if you go counter or clock, counterclockwise or cl actual clockwise. It doesn't matter. You'll still line up here. So let's write down the new points. Let me grab a new pen. Hold up. What color? <clears throat> Purple. I heard you. All right. Uh, P. Triple prime <laughs> is going to be negative 2, negative 2. Q triple prime is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's negative 5 and 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4. And R triple prime is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4, negative 1. And we are done with those rotations. Uh, I'm not going to go in, like I said, I'm not going to go into how to do that with algebra shortcuts, but you take a second, take a screenshot of this, you can probably figure out what the algebra shortcuts are, how to flip the points, how to change the signs, and your geometry teacher is probably going to go over that with you as well. I wanted to show you how to use a piece of wax paper to be, or a baggie to be able to do these and get the right answers even if you do not understand the algebra shortcuts, which I found was most common issue. These are the ones, these are the problems that are most commonly asked in geometry class. If you found that video helpful, please hit like and subscribe and I'll keep, I love geometry, so I'll keep doing these when I can. And there is a geometry playlist you can click into. If there's another video that you'd like to see, let's let YouTube pick one for you. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.